I really need you to pay attention to this because with this information, you could be saving your life or you could be saving the life of someone that it's close to you or someone that you really love. And what is that? Because we're going to talk about strokes and we're going to talk about the early signs in which you could be suspicious that someone or you is having a stroke. And this is something that really, really needs to pick up our attention because did you know that per year there are 15 million people all over the world suffering from strokes? This is something that you might say, whoa, I had no clue. 15 million people and it's ascending it's growing and it's been growing like it's been skyrocketing why because of our habits and this is something that shouldn't be happening at all i remember that cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death all over the world and cerebrovascular disease it's the same part of that it's not just a different chapter it's the same thing why because the root cause, it's the same thing. Metabolic problems linked to chronic inflammation. And all of this, it's 100% related to our habits. This is something that we thought that was only for the elder. But follow me because I'm, through the video, I'm going to be explaining most of the things that you can do to prevent. What are the differences in between the types of strokes? But especially what are the early signs in which you can suspect who has a stroke and what can you do about it? So let's start. So again, this is something that has been really rising on the last years. Did you know that every six seconds someone gets a stroke? This is something that when you bring attention to this every six seconds, this is something amazing. And let's remember that there are two kinds of strokes. We have ischemic strokes and we have hemorrhagic strokes. What are ischemic strokes? Ischemic stroke is, remember that arteries in the body, they carry blood with oxygen and with nutrients. And those are the ones that you want to get to the tissue, to the cells, in order to get what they need, especially oxygen and glucose and all the rest of the nutrients. The veins, they take all things back, but they bring everything and especially they bring the blood without oxygen because it's coming again to get the oxygen in the lungs. So what happens if I make an obstruction on the blood flow from an artery? It could be a big one, a small one, a medium one, a very tiny small one. What happens? The cells that were, that were needing that oxygen, those that were needing that, that oxygen, that blood, they're not going to receive it at all. Think of a tree. When, when you imagine that you have a big branch that divides into medium branches that divide into small branches until they get to the leaves. Think of the leaves as the cells and think that you're carrying whatever comes inside the branches. You're delivering everything the leaf needs. You're carrying through the branches. What happens if you obstruct that? If you cut the flow? Well, it depends on which branch, if it's the big one, the medium one, or the small one, it depends on the amount of leaves that you're going to affect. The same thing happens with the arteries. So that's the ischemic stroke. And what's the other part? When you have a hemorrhage, when you have blood coming out. So that happens especially when you have an aneurysm. Aneurysms are little dilations inside the veins or inside the arteries in which you can see that it's a little bit dilated, but you can see like a bump coming outside from the artery. That part is different because it doesn't have all the layers from the artery, so it's a little bit thinner. And because it's thinner, it's very easy for them to break. And it's very easy for them to spill out all the content and all the blood that they have inside. When we have a stroke, that it's a hemorrhagic stroke, the blood comes out and it starts getting inside between different layers inside the cranium but it's going to be outside of the brain and the symptoms are going to be of course if it's ischemic or if it's hemorrhagic it's going to depend on the area that it's affecting but when it's hemorrhagic it could be a little bit of blood coming maybe more that it's only affecting that area or it also could start affecting in a way that it's a large amount of, of blood flow coming out then it's start going to start compressing the brain going down because going up, it can go because of the cranial, because of the bone. But we have everything compressing down and it could affect the area of the brain, but it could also affect different parts of the brain. So these are the two divisions. And again, I want you to be aware of them because they're going to be very different. But again, about the symptoms that I'm going to talk to you about, if you ever think of having a symptom, 
the best thing that you can do is to run to the hospital, to call 911, to ask for help. Why? Because every second counts. Every single second, it's completely important for you, for your health, for your everything. On prevention, there are a lot of things that you can do in prevention. Why? Because everything related with cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disease it's everything related with diet, exercise, sleep, stress management. And this is the only purpose of this channel. Remember that in this channel, and thank you because we already have more than 100,000 followers. And remember that in our Spanish channel, we're almost getting to 3 million followers. So that's why. But what's the purpose of getting all these followers? The, the, the only purpose is to show you that there is a way in which you can learn to be the manager of your own health. But let's go deeper into knowing which are those symptoms that you really need to be taking, that you really need to be aware. So number one, if you have a deviation in your face, if you lose strength in your face, if you have like a, a contraction that it's occurring from one moment to another, if you lose strength or sensibility in one side of your body, that it's something that happens just spontaneously, very fast, this could be a sign. Number two, it's if you get confusion or a difficulty to speak or a difficulty to know where you are, or if you lo lose completely the ability of knowing who are you or who's the person that you have on the side, but it's something to just happen. You were talking perfectly before and something just starts right over. Number three, it's the sudden loss of vision in one eye, in two eyes, and or any change on the visual field because you could lose vision the same thing, it has to be something fast and spontaneous. You could lose maybe on the periphery or you can lose vision just in the center. You were seeing perfectly and just boop, out of the blue. Number four, it's a difficulty to walk, difficulty to stand, difficulty to hold your equilibrium or a difficulty to perform any task that requires any coordination at all. Like, I don't know, eating, driving, just clapping and switching hands or something that you could you were perfectly before and just from one moment to another then you start having these kind of symptoms number five is if you have an intense headache that just occurs from one moment to the other but it's very 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 intense and these are the things that probably i've seen on my practice and when i used to work at the hospital on the on the ed i used to see that most of the patients that came with Part of the diagnosis that it was too late is when they forget that this is an early sign and there was a moment, uh, there was a opportunity to do something about it. But let's go for some symptoms that could be a little bit common, but they can really appear. Number six, it's going to be if you have maybe changes on your mood or your personality. But again, changes in your mood and personality that appear and occur spontaneously or when you see someone that was perfectly normal and starts, I don't know, crying or being very, very hyper and excited, extremely happy or extremely sad or extremely afraid. Number seven, it's seizures or it's any kind of seizure. If you have a seizure, right, it could be epilepsy, of course, or it could be any other cause. But when you have a stroke or when you have a bleeding, they could also cause a seizure. And you cannot say or think like, oh, well, this is the first time this could be something else. It's just a seizure that I need to see what's happening. No, again, it could be the cause. What can you do or what should you do? Run to the ED, call for, for help, call for 911 to come because we have only seconds to perform something in which could be an effective treatment. And number eight could be the loss of consciousness. When we lose consciousness at all in any kind, again, happening fast, spontaneously from one moment to the other, it can be a very, very early sign and there are things that we can do. People think that strokes, it's something that only happens to the elder. And no, did you know that more than 40,000 kids under the age of 13 are being diagnosed of strokes every single year in the United States. This is something that breaks my heart. I'm a father of two boys. So guys, this is something that is very important. It's killing people every six seconds and we should be doing something about it. Remember, changing the system, it's by creating a system within people in which we can create health starting from home. And this is something that you can do not by creating fear, it's by creating consciousness. When we have a switch, 
in our consciousness, when we have a switch in our beliefs, and we, when we make them not beliefs, but facts and facts supported by science and things that we really can do about it, then we're changing things. And then we're creating a healthier system that includes us and not that excludes us. And remember that the best way to support us is very easy, just to share the videos with your contacts. Please remember, if you haven't done so, to hit the like button. Please remember to subscribe to, subscribe to the channel and to hit the bell. So every time that we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you guys. Until next one.